turned out fine. Rained all morning. A little hot, but every now and then it got a cool breeze. Terry Laproos looking down in an adjacent Serenier, hands over. Nice banner. Loving memory of Terry Laparoos, who passed away in 2023. A lot of family and friends gather here today at a very iconic spot where a lot of people have gathered for many, many years to pay their respects to Terry Laproos, who really knew a lot of people, and a lot of people enjoyed his presence. Let's listen in as a few people had great things to say and then a very touching moment when the ashes of Terry Laparoos were spread over a place he loved the most. Hello everyone, thank you all for being here today to celebrate the life of Mr. Terry Laparoos. After 88 years of living on Robinson Canal, Mr. Terry Laparoos was a wealth of knowledge about the land and water that he called home. He knew how the water worked, and he knew when to drop the nets. He watched the tide come in, and he watched the tide go out day after day after day. His relationship with the canal was personal. It provided food and income for his family, and a little bit of fun too. Mr. Terry was one of the hardest working men that I've ever known, next to my own dad. It's no wonder why my dad, Zeke Foray, along with Leroy Foray, and David Tomplay were all such close friends with Mr. Terry. Working hard was something that he took pride in. It was something he valued in others, and it was something he expected from his children. If his kids ever wanted anything, they were expected to work for it. He even installed a big speaker on the house so that he could call the kids to work from wherever they might be playing. The kids would turn the shrimp to dry in the hot sun, and then they'd jump into the canal to cool off. He called his dried shrimp red gold or Cajun peanuts. He was proud to be able to continue the traditions of his family that came before him, and he was proud to see his children learn those traditions from him. He was also able to take the essence of that tradition and modernize it with the shrimp dryers and the beaters. No longer would people have to dry the shrimp in the sun or wear sacks on their feet to do the shrimp dance to get the shells off. You know, I was thinking about what to say today, and I remember a passage in the Bible about the kingdom of heaven being like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, the fishermen dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the good fish into the crates and threw the bad ones away. And it was said, that's the way that it'll be at the end of the world. The angels will come down and separate the wicked people from the righteous. In the pick and box of life, I can assure you that Mr. Terry was a good fish, or maybe even a jumbo shrimp, but he was definitely a keeper. I once asked him what he would miss most if he ever had to move away from Robinson Canal. Without hesitation, he said the people, and then he said cooking. Everyone he met soon became a friend, and then he had them eating jambalaya and white beans before the week was over. He really loved people. Big and small, young and old, he loved us all. Mr. Terry will never have to move away from the place or the people he loved most. Along with Pam and Roy, they will forever be able to watch over their friends and family. We are all lucky to have had him as a part of our lives to teach us how to be hard workers, how to be kind, how to care for one another, how the tides work, and when to drop the nets. Robinson Canal will not be the same without him, but his legacy remains. As long as his children are here to keep the store open and to keep the campground running, as long as there's white beans to cook and jambalaya to share, he will never be forgotten. And although his chair at the end of the bar may be empty, our hearts will forever be full with the wonderful memories, friendship, and love that he shared with all of us. On behalf of Mr. Terry's family, thank you all for being here today 
to celebrate his life and share this day of remembrance together. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Buddy Stringer. I was Tara's best friend. He grew up here and I grew down to buy where Cecil's at. That was my place to make a living. My daddy had the uh, a shrimp platform and my grandpa had the store. And Uncle Lester had this place and it was a communication between the families together. So my daddy dried dry shrimp on the platform and he did. And he was one that taught me how to dirty my hands, and which he did. Because when I was old enough, he had me working on the platform. And then when it comes time for the, the season would finish, he would trap for muskrats. He had me in the bar, picking up the muskrats out of the bar. So we left from down there, and we moved up there because his grandma had died and daddy had bought that place. So it was kind of a lonesome place from leaving from down the by because it was a very convenient place to do. You always had the living on the buyer, down the buyer. And this place years ago was an open range for cattle. We had cattle on this road. We had 300 heads of cattle on this road for different people. And once a month, the people that had the cattle they used to round up everything, the brand, the, the say this was my calf and this is my cow and that was a good part of the buyer. But anyway, I enjoyed Terry. We always went to school at, Leca at Bayer, I mean at Budo Canal right here. And we always convert the things. His daddy had bought him a little Jeep, World War II B Jeep. And we run the buyer and we pulled some tricks and we, fortunately we never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was always the fun, and Terry was a great person. We had always have a little eyeball between me and him, but that uh, sometimes we made the difference in communicating, but we all laughed after it was all finished. But Terry, I miss him. So he's now in a great place, and I hope he goes with St. Peter, show him how the things were done down the bike. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Terry's family would like to invite everyone to the by side uh, for uh, releasing his ashes into the canal, please. Kenneth, what a, a solemn day, but, but pretty neat when you, when you look at just what took place. Have you ever been to, to something like this? I know I haven't, but it was, it was pretty neat. Yeah, it was. And taking into consideration how the day started, I mean, with all the rain and everything, and then you know he's up there, you know, looking down on us to bless us. What a beautiful afternoon. The man's going to be missed. Yeah. You know, he's just an awesome old man. Kim and I started coming across from Dulac. We have our camp in Dulac, and we come across, and we sit there, and we talk. And the man, like, like Jonathan said, he was a, 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 an encyclopedia, the knowledge that he had, you know, for this area. And uh, he's just going to be missed. Yeah, a lot of people came today, so he, uh, he didn't it just touch one life. Yeah, he touched many lives, didn't he? Many, many lives. Yeah. He touched mine. You know, I've come here so many times for storms. We've traversed this whole area, but... When you pass right here, it's just always been a landmark. It has. It's, uh, you know, for years and years and years, Kim and I have been camping for many years, and I cross that bridge right there, and I look at this campground, and I say, man, them poor people, I said, they don't know 
where to go camping. I said, he probably can't afford to go camping. Well, come to find out, it wasn't local people that was camping here. There's people from all over the country that come camp at this campground just to uh, cast net for the shrimp and all of that. And uh, it's just a wonderful place to come. I've told many of my friends, you know, to come here, and, uh, and, and they do. You know, this place stays pretty busy, but of course, Ida had, had plans of its own and, and kind of made a mess of things, and it took him a little while to get back on his feet. But as you can tell, there's a few campers in there right now, and uh, come the August season, there'll be more people. There's people from Florida, Oklahoma, you name it, and there's a lot of people that come here. But uh, this place is iconic, you know. There's not too many places in Terrebonne Parish that they can that has this, you know. And it's right in our backyard, you know. It feels pretty good today. Oh, it feels real good today. So he brought a breeze today. Yes, he did. <laughs> he brought, he's got a little heat, but he's got the breeze. Hey, Amen. As the boat pulls back up, we'll get Jason to get a little shot of that. And uh, that was unique, Kenneth. I never quite seen anything like that, but uh, he was unique, wasn't he? He was very unique. The man had a heart of gold. If he could help you, he was gonna help you. Even if you told him no, he was gonna help you. And like I said, you know, I sat across the bar from him many a times, and he told me stories about this canal right here. This, mm -hmm. this canal was hand dug. It was hand dug. It, it, they didn't have a machine or anything, it was hand dug, and it went into that lake of course, the lake wasn't like it is now, and, and they, they used to halt uh, cane and stuff like that through there. That's why we got to preserve the legacies, because without the stories, we forget them. Yeah, and look, he could tell you some stuff. Yeah. In fact, one time they had uh, some people from France that came from Lumcom over here, and they was partying in a bar, and I got a video of it. Uh, I told a girl from France, I said, go get that old man. I said, he loves to dance. So she went and pulled him off the bar stool, and she started dancing with him. And then, you know, he's looking at me, he's like, <laughs> he's giving me the thumbs up, you know, like, you got him a good one, you know. He's just a good, awesome old man, awesome old man, you know. And I'm going to miss him. Kim and I are going to miss him. This is the bar stool they talked about where Mr. Terry Laparus stayed while in the bar. You can see today a picture of Mr. Terry sits quietly on the bar. But also right next to it, a Michelob Ultra cold and ready for Terry to drink. Hey, Tim, uh, Tim, where are you from? We're from the Port Island area, West Baton Rouge Parish. All right. Nothing to do with Baton Rouge. Yeah. But, and, uh, and how long have you been coming down here? That stall right there. Yeah. Number 10. 30 yeah. years. Almost 30 years. You got stories. I got too many. <laughs> Papa wanted to know how old I was when I remembered the old wooden bridges were down here. Yeah. And I told at the time I told Papa I was 65. I'm 70 now. Yeah. And that's how quick he could not believe how old I was yeah. and all the stories I had. So we started telling stories together. <laughs> and we never stopped. Everybody, everybody has a story though when it oh, comes yeah. to Terry. Way, way, way too many. Yeah. Way too many stories. This place, like I said, yeah. is it's 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 an iconic place. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, it's Tetwan Parish, but you know, it's not. They don't have enough votes. Right. They right. need all of the votes that they can get down here for yeah. the people that's right. invested in this yeah. for 40, 50 years. I remember everybody running for office had to come over here and get the blessing of Terry. Eight, eight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. eight or nine votes.